My name is Alex Coco. We've got a bunch of Atrivi students here. Wave hi. Hello, everyone. Hey, guys. Hey. So we're going to get started with introductions real fast and get right into your questions. Thanks for submitting them online. So let's kick it, guys. Let's start with the introductions. <laughs> Sorry, oh, my, that's my mic was muted. Sorry, my bad. Hey guys, I'm Betty. I'm currently a junior studying aerospace engineering at USC on campus. I'm involved in the Klein Institute of Undergraduate Engineering Life. I'm a freshman academy coach and I'm an editor for Lumen Magazine. This past summer I studied abroad in London through the Viterbi Overseas Program and I did research in nanomaterials in Germany. Awesome. All right. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Jordan Seeley. I'm a senior studying biomedical engineering with a minor in entrepreneurship. I'm originally from Auburn, California, which is about smack dab in the middle of Sacramento and Tahoe. And uh, some things that I'm involved with outside of academics are 3D4E, which stands for 3D for Everyone. It's a 3D printing club on campus uh, for pretty much anyone of any academic background or discipline. Uh, I'm also involved with the Blackstone Launchpad, which is an area on campus where students can go to get venture consulting help. And... Uh, Actually, just last week, I accepted a full-time offer with PwC, so I'll be starting there in Boston uh, starting next August. So. And hi, everyone. My name is Madalena. I study biomedical engineering with a minor in Spanish. Uh, on campus, I am involved in research in a biomedical microsystems laboratory doing research in flow sensors for hydrocephalus shunts. Um, I'm also involved in the same club as Jordan, 3D4E. Uh, we work on printing prosthetics for kids in the local community. I do work with the Society of Women Engineers and a philanthropy called Troy Camp. And last summer, I was studying abroad in Madrid, but this summer, I will be interning with Abbott as a biomedical quality intern. Hey, guys. I'm Daisy. I'm a junior majoring in environmental engineering from Dallas, Texas. On campus, I'm involved with the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, the largest Latino organization on campus. Off campus, I work across the street at the California Science Center as an academic, as an <laughs> educational presenter, where I teach kids about science. And this past summer, I did research at UC Berkeley. Cool. Hi, everyone. My name is Eric. I'm a sophomore studying electrical engineering with a minor in entrepreneurship. Uh, on campus, I'm president of USC Theta Tau, a professional engineering fraternity. I play club water polo. I'm on SC Racing, where we build race cars. We go out to Lincoln, Nebraska, and race every year. And outside of school, I started a city fellows consortium with a venture capitalist trying to connect LA tech talent with uh, LA venture capital. Hi everyone, my name is Kelly. I'm originally from Littleton, Colorado and I'm currently a senior studying civil engineering building science. On campus I'm part of the American Society of Civil Engineers which is a professional organization and within that I'm on the concrete canoe team where we make a canoe out of concrete. Yes, it does float. And then I'm also a freshman academy coach, which is a class that all freshmen take to help welcome them to the engineering school. And then outside of Viterbi, I'm the captain of the women's ice hockey team, and Ellen actually is on the team. And then I have a work-study job where I work um, in the auditorium on campus. All right, hi, everyone. My name is Ellen. I'm a junior double majoring in computer science and physics from Irvine, California. On campus, um, I'm a teaching assistant for CS103, which is Introduction to Programming. And I also do research in RF coil and eddy current uh, imaging for the inspection of composite airplane parts. And then for fun, like Kelly said, I'm on the women's ice hockey team. I'm actually the president. Woo! <laughs> well, thank you, Ellen. Thank you, Kelly. Um, my name is Alex Kogo. I'm a senior major in astronomical engineering, originally from a small town called Danbury, Connecticut. Uh, within Viterbi, I work in USC's Rock Repulsion Lab, where I'm in charge of the parachute recovery system, which essentially makes sure that our rocket that's supposed to go to space comes back down safely. Um, aside from that, outside of, outside of the rocket lab, I'm involved in USC to which is an Israeli consulting investing organization. We've consulted for multiple startups uh, based in Tel Aviv. And uh, this coming summer, I'll be headed to the rocket capital of the world, Huntsville, Alabama, to work on space launch system for Boeing. So. That is us. Keep on submitting questions to the trivivoices.usc.edu slash live. Um, but for now, let's go to our first question. So this question comes in from a multitude of students, Romeo, Anthony, Cindy. Thank you guys for joining us and for posing this question. But essentially, the question is, how much time do you guys spend a night on homework? But let's, let's broaden it. Um, what is the student experience like uh, for a USC student, for a USC engineer? Take it away, guys. Yeah, uh, I mean, I guess I can start. Um, so in terms of overall time consumption and how I divide, like, the time I have during the day, um, I go to class in the middle of the day, but most of the time in the afternoon, I go to the gym or I go to practice where I play water polo, and at night, 
a lot of the time is spent towards like clubs and catching up on stuff or different meetings that I have to prep for the next day. Uh, in terms of actually sitting down and studying or doing homework assignments or working on projects for class assignments, I would say every week I'd spend like around 10 hours to 15 hours and the rest of my uh, time outside of class would be spent on extracurriculars, both social and academic. Yeah, just to expand on that, uh, sorry. <laughs> Um, I would just say, like, for me, this semester, I have class that starts kind of late, so my classes don't start till 11 or noon, so I usually spend my time in the morning doing my homeworks, and like Eric said, fill my nights with extracurriculars like hockey, so I think, like, the important thing is just that, like, classes can be really flexible, and so um, the important thing to remember is that you just kind of fit in your activities and your homework wherever it works out. Yeah, like, everything Eric and Ellen said, kind of the biggest takeaway for me, like, in high school, you'll have a very set schedule. You know, you'll go to school, you know, seven to three or something like that. Then you have practice, then you have homework every night. And in college, you know, you have one homework assignment maybe per class and maybe a paper. So it very much goes to your time management, and you kind of make your own schedule with what you want to do with it. And so for me, I work best at night, so, like, I tend to you know, do all my activities, go to class, and I start my homework around 6, and then I'll do my homework throughout the night. So it all depends on you, and it's definitely a huge um, challenge in time management once you get to college. Great. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you, Betty. Um, I'm going to make a quick plug here. We've got this great new program called uh, basically Have Lunch with a Viterbi Student. Um, Lunch with a Viterbi Student. And you can sign up for that program. If you guys look directly up on your screen, you should see a tab called Lunches. Click on that tab, and you can sign up to have lunch with a current Viterbi student and to learn what our life is like here at SC. Um, so definitely check that out uh, during and after the live chat. So our second question here comes from Evan. Evan wants to know from a few of you guys, why did you choose your major? So what motivated your major choice? Yeah, I'll start with that one, actually. Uh, I always love telling the story. Uh, basically, in, in high school, I'd taken all the sciences, taken all the math and stuff like that, and senior year I started taking AP Bio and it was my first real exposure into biology and you know before that having taken those classes I knew that I wanted to do something in engineering or math or maybe even architecture but really taking AP Bio was the thing that kind of solidified it for me and specifically once we got to physiological systems and kind of how the different organ systems in the body work um, that was what kind of got me really super interested and then like the capstone of that was watching a TED talk uh, where they did a, a 3D printing of a kidney uh, live on stage and I automatically saw that and I was like that's what I want to do um, and that's kind of how I got you know involved in 3D printing here although we don't print kidneys we do a lot of different uh, 3D printing um, which is pretty cool to have uh, that biomedical background as well. Yeah, I would say yeah. for me, um, growing up, I have uh, I played ice hockey all throughout my childhood, and we would travel a lot to play different teams, because from Colorado, there's not that many teams, so I would always travel to different cities around the U.S., and the thing I would always notice was, you know, the buildings that made up the town, and getting to explore the cities, I would really remember, you know, the architecture, the layout of the city, that um, how that city was laid out, and from that, I really, you know, fell in love with buildings and building design and from that um, in high school I did a engineering camp over the summer at uh, University of Kansas and I just spent a week doing civil engineering and then from then I was set because I knew couldn't do anything besides that. Yeah, my story is kind of similar to Jordan's. In high school I also was really good at math and science and I really liked it and it wasn't I took I took AP chemistry and I really really liked it. So I originally came into USC as a chemical engineering major with an environmental emphasis and then at orientation I switched to environmental engineering because I knew I really wanted to focus on be creating more sustainable systems and especially focusing on providing uh, water for uh, underdeveloped nations. I mean I guess my story is a little bit different. Uh, my parents are both engineers and growing up I have always had like a lot of technical stuff around the house I would play around with and like I remember very early on I think it was sixth grade I went to a summer camp at Stanford studying robotics and like ever since then I've been involved in robotics and knew I wanted to study robotics. But coming into college I actually came in as a mechanical engineer. Um, wasn't really sure how I, wanted to, how, how I wanted to approach the robotics industry and after getting here and getting more exposure to like what robotics really is, I chose to switch over to EE and approach it from that angle. So really quick Eric, that's a, I, I'm really happy you said that because we've got another great question here from Chloe and Biniam, and Chloe and Biniam want to know, how easy is it to switch majors with a Viterbi, and, and is it common? Do a lot of people come in undeclared, a lot of people switch majors, 
What do you, what is your experience with that? Eric, you kind of touched on it, but let's elaborate yeah. a little bit on that. Yeah, uh, I mean, so personally, I applied as a mechanical engineer, and I think within the first week of school, I switched over to EE because of, like, the research I was involved in and the people I've been talking to. I still decided to take the mechanical engineering intro class because all of those are interchangeable. So the great part about that is even though I decided to switch really on in the first semester and could have taken intro to EE, I stuck with mechanical engineering. And that means that basically if you come in as any other engineering major, you can take any of the intro classes to explore if you potentially like that field. And even after taking that intro class, it counts towards all the other engineering majors, so you won't be any, anywhere behind all the other kids in your, in your new major. So transferring at Viterbi is super easy. I just went in and filled out a form, and the, like, the advisors helped me through the whole process. And I know a lot of friends who have, tra who have transferred within Viterbi as well, and I haven't heard a single person complain about the process. So, yeah. Yeah, I think, I, I mean, I'll just add on to that. Um, yeah. it, it doesn't even necessarily have to be, like, out of your own major, but uh, even if you want to switch emphases. So uh, uh, yeah. within each discipline, there's, like, different emphases. So when I, when I first came in, I was biomedical with biochemical emphasis, and uh, I took OCHEM my sophomore fall, uh, and then I decided that I wanted to do an entrepreneurship minor as well. And so basically when you have your semesterly uh, evaluation or your actual conversation with your advisor, uh, basically they'll just make sure you're on track for what you want to do, what you want to do in four years. And so I had that conversation. I said, well, I want to do an entrepreneurship minor. And basically, I wanted to free up some units and um, was able to fit that in by switching to biomedical regular emphasis. Fantastic. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for answering that. Um, so we just got a great question. It just came in from Corey about less than a minute ago now. And basically, someone I've ever here turned the clock back to senior year of high school, all right? And Corey's from Atlanta, Georgia, and Corey wants to know, um, for those of you not from the uh, West Coast, how hard was it to, to, to transition to life at USC? What was that transition like? So, I know, Daisy, you're from Dallas. Kelly, you're from Colorado. You want to take us away on this one? And I guess, Jordan, you're from Northern California, but that's <laughs> might, cool. as well be, might as well be different, right? <laughs> <laughs> might as well. But take us away there. What, what's that transition period like for, for USC freshmen? Yeah, so um, yeah, so as uh, Coco mentioned, I'm from Dallas, and honestly, I didn't feel a very harsh transition at all. I feel like since coming from Dallas, it's not the biggest city, but it's still not a small town, so I did get to have that urban feel when I moved to L.A., and um, the only big difference was that it doesn't get ridiculously hot here or also very cold, so I've learned to live without air conditioning, and it's completely possible, and it's someone coming from Texas, when you tell them that you're going to live in a dorm with no AC, they freak out, so that happened to me, but it was completely fine, and I absolutely love living here. Yeah, I would say um, Colorado's quite different from LA. Um, it's very outdoorsy, whereas here it's a really big city, but when you're on campus, you don't even feel like you're really in LA, because the campus is so big, there's so many buildings, so much going on, and I always say that my freshman year felt like summer camp because you're in the dorm with all your friends in the same hallway and it's really easy to transition and the dorms are a great place that you know make you feel welcome make you and foster friendships and you know make sure you call your parents because you will miss them if you're from out of state but it's definitely doable and then if you do want to explore LA it's really easy to too there's um, a train stop like right near the campus where you can you know hop on the train go downtown go to a cool restaurant uh, go hiking there's just lots to do here too so going off of uh, Kelly's point that was awesome that you brought that up Kelly because we've got another cool question here from a slew of students uh, Samuel Chris Dakota thanks for joining us Dakota you put up a great point you said you were intimidated a little bit by the, the engineering coursework coming and you weren't quite sure how you'd have both a, a social life and a strong academic, uh, a strong academic work ethic. So, kind of the question I want to pose to the panel here is: Is it possible to manage your time effectively, such that you can get out in Los Angeles, explore what Los Angeles has to offer, have a strong social life while doing well in your engineering classes? I can kind of start that one off for you guys. Um, so, definitely, when you first get into school, uh, one of the big things you'll notice is it's really difficult, but also exciting to kind of establish your own rhythm. Uh, when I first got to campus, I got really involved in a lot of different activities, and I kind of found that my social communities tended to follow the activities that I was involved in. So I got involved in a cappella, I got involved in Troy Camp, which is kind of like a tutoring group for kids, and, um, and different engineering groups as well, like the Society of Women Engineers, and kind of those uh, 
created communities that I was able to participate in, which was really great. Uh, and then kind of the social life followed outside of that. It definitely is difficult to manage uh, all the schoolwork. It will be a lot of information thrown at you very quickly. Um, but there's an amazing support network to kind of deal with that. So I know that I really benefited from study groups and kind of working with my, uh, with my fellow biomedical engineers to kind of uh, understand the coursework. And so it's definitely a balance, but it's a very doable one. And uh, as you can see from all on the live chat tonight, Everyone kind of has their own thing that they do and are very involved and also uh, have thriving social lives. And so it's very exciting to kind of see the balance. Yeah, I would say, too, you can almost use, like, your social life as a way to get your homework done. So you can be like, oh, like, if I don't finish my homework tonight, then I can't go hang out with my friends. So then, you know, you're more likely to get your homework done. And kind of what Madalena was saying, too, I've met a lot of my best friends through getting involved in different clubs. Um, like, some of my best friends are from the civil engineering club that I'm in. So even you know, your organizations can become part of your social life, but then you can definitely have, you know, your nights and weekends to go out and be, you know, just a normal kid in college doing fun things. Uh, what sort of things do you guys like to do in LA on the weekends and the evenings, specifically? I can start off with this one, because um, I just wrote a blog about this the other day, but like I'm a really yeah. big sports fan. <laughs> Plug the blog. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so like growing up, I was a really big fan of USC football, actually. I'm also a really big Kings fan, if you guys can see on my wall back there. So one of my favorite things to do in LA is go out to sporting events. And like Kelly said, we're just like a really short train stop away from downtown LA. So you could go see basketball games, hockey games, um, anything like that. So that's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. Really fast. Oh, sorry, Kelly. Uh, well, I'll just say real Oh, you go. No, you go. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> While you're listening to us, feel free to check out our blogs. If you look up on your screen, there is a should be a tab for blogs. So feel free to check those out during the live chat if you'd like um, on a separate tab. Um, but sorry, Kelly, continue. Yeah. That's what Ellen was referring to. Um, I think one of my favorite things about LA is all the different restaurants that and different types of cuisine you can have. So from Colorado. Uh, we're not the most diverse place, I guess you could say, um, and I had, you know, kind of ate typical American food growing up, you know, every meal probably had potatoes with it, but coming to um, college, I really decided to branch out on try different, you know, food types, so I've been, you know, trying out, you know, Chinese restaurants, Thai restaurants, yeah, I even went to like an Ethiopian restaurant, and only in a city like LA can you really get exposed to, you know, different types of food and different types of culture, so I really like, you know, just on the weekend looking up on Yelp and just trying out a new restaurant. Yeah, I think adding on to that, there's a, there's a lot of great opportunities to go see museums and stuff like that. So uh, actually my freshman summer when I was still in L.A., um, I did a lot of biking around L.A. Um, and I actually biked out to the Getty Center and the Getty Villa, uh, which have become two of my favorite museums to go to. Um, they're really great for uh, college students because they actually have a college night that you can go to and kind of see all the different exhibits that they have. They actually change them up throughout the year. Um, so going once doesn't necessarily mean that you've seen everything there is to see there. Um, but then also there's LACMA, which is where they have urban lights. It's the one with like a thousand city lamps and, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of museums and stuff to see in the city as well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Um, so kind of our, our next question, we're going to shift back to, to academics a little more here. Um, let's turn back the clock to freshman year. What does a typical freshman year academic schedule look like? Uh, I mean, I guess, so Madalena and I are both sophomores, so I guess we had freshman year most recently. But uh, yeah. from what I remember, uh, my first semester was uh, like the intro class to whatever uh, engineering discipline you're in or like the 101 uh, exploratory intro class uh, freshman academy which uh, Kelly and Betty can talk more about because they're coaching it um, <laughs> and math math and science basically so like and, and a C++ programming class because I'm I was studying electrical engineering but um, the, the thing about starting out in college like USC Viterbi has like one of the really cool programs, I think, because it lets you get exposed to engineering really early on through, like, the academy class, through the intro class, and even, like, programming classes. But, like, you still need the foundation of math and science to, to really do, like, the cool stuff in your higher-level tech classes. So I guess freshman year is going to be about half-half of those basic, like, fundamental classes at physics, math. Depends on, like, where you got in high school. And then 
Uh, the other half is more basic engineering classes that introduce you to actual skills that you'll apply throughout your engineering like career. And every once in a while, you'll sprinkle in like a GE class that you have to take. But those are always yeah. interesting. And it is really nice as well to get to kind of supplement all your engineering classes with those general education requirements as well. So uh, I know my freshman year, I'm in a program called Thematic Option, which is kind of a literature reading-based alternative to the general education program. So I was taking classes in writing and literature. Um, and I was also able to throw in a couple guitar classes on the side. So it was a really nice balance kind of between the more engineering focused and then kind of the more uh, relaxed ones. Going back to like what Eric was saying earlier with your intro class and like getting right into engineering, I thought that was the coolest thing for me personally because in my intro to aerospace class, I got to build a glider as my project. So literally it was us in a group and we were in a team and we were learning how to work in a team and we got to build an entire glider from scratch and um, on glider day we got to fly it and test it and our team actually won, which was awesome. So it was a really great opportunity to like really get our feet wet in engineering and I think some people, you know, learn whether they like that discipline or not. Like Eric took the class and three days later he realized, you know, mechanical is not for me so I'm going to be EE, but I took it and I realized I loved it. So I was really glad um, we were able to have that experience freshman year. And like really quick on top of that, like the skills you learn in that, that cl those classes, the intro classes, and then even like the classes that you take after those classes, second semester, it really helps start off your career early, really early on um, in terms of like getting internships and research positions because you have tangible skills that you can talk about and like engineering projects that you've done that you can like demonstrate that you can actually do these things as opposed to saying I, I've taken this math class and this phys physics class, which is very different from some other schools that uh, have engineering programs, so, yeah. Fantastic, well thanks guys. Um, so we're about 20 minutes in now, and I wanna thank everyone who's watching all across the nation. We really appreciate it, and I hope you're getting something out of it. Um, a few seconds ago, I had a great question from Andrew. Andrew wants to know, it's a two-part question. So the first part of his question is, how large are your classes? And the second part is, how accessible are your professors? So let's, let's tackle that first part first. How large are your classes uh, typically? Yeah, so I can talk about the class size. Um, so for me personally, I'm civil engineering building science, which is one of the emphasis within civil engineering. And within um, my building science class, which is like a studio class we take every semester, there's only eight kids. So that class is really tiny, which is great, and we get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the professor. Um, but I would say typically, like my average civil engineering class, not the non-building science ones, are about 30 kids, which is still pretty small and then all of those classes will also have a discussion section with a TA so you can get you know further help um, and ask questions to the TA. Yeah so Kelly mentioned that she's part of one of the smaller majors but um, I'm a computer science major which is one of the more popular ones. Even so our classes aren't any bigger than 30 kids like she said so even though it's popular and there may be more students they don't just make the sections bigger they just make more sections. So generally speaking the biggest class you're going to be in is like 30 to 40. Yeah, yeah I, I think that. Oh, go ahead, Daisy. <laughs> Thanks, Jordan. Um, my case is similar to Kelly, so my major, environmental engineering, is very, very small. In right now, in my environmental engineering's principles, we're only ten, and in past classes, I've had twelve. Uh, but I also take other classes within the civil engineering department, such as fluid mechanics, and we're about twenty-five, thirty students. So it really varies on your major and what class you're taking. Yeah, I was just going to add, um, so if you're in like a general science class or something like that for biology or chemistry or something like that, um, you might have a little bit more. Those sections tend to be between like 100 to 150 people, um, but even in those, when you're in lab, those lab sections are typically capped between like 20 and 25 people, so when you're actually doing those lab um, exams and stuff like that, the, uh, the actual number of people uh, is about the same as what you would experience in an engineering uh, course. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit bigger for those general sciences. Yeah, and to kind of go off, I guess, the second part of the question, which was if professors are easy or available and easy to talk to, I would definitely say they are. Every um, professor has office hours, which is time that they set for specific classes every week, and they encourage students to come, and a lot of people don't take advantage of it, which is silly, but you can go in and, you know, either get homework help or even just, you know, talk to, you know, a professor about your future career or research or any of that kind of stuff. Um, and so professors are always willing to help, and they're, you know, quick to answer emails um, if you need help that way, too. Uh, anyone else have any specific professors that they uh, want to maybe give a shout-out to for just being uh, giving them a good academic experience? 
Yeah, uh, I do that. Oh no, go ahead, Madalena. <laughs> it's, okay. well, it's gonna be Bickers, twenty bucks. Yeah, I was gonna say Bickers. <laughs> Bickers. <laughs> So um, I am in a physics class right now that is uh, very, very, very difficult, but because of that, there's a great community there as well. Um, it is the class that is definitely the most, the hardest one that I've taken so far, but also the one that I love the most. Um, the professor, Professor Vickers, is really wonderful, and we probably spend, uh, we joke all the time about just setting up beds in his office because we're always there doing problem sets and things like that, um, but he's a great, uh, he's one of the professors at USC who's really phenomenal and um, just very, very accessible to students, really encouraging, and uh, so we enjoy that a lot. <laughs> um, I'm going to give a shout out to someone who is not a physics professor. Um, so actually my sophomore year I took a materials class and I always went in office hours and I kind of made myself visible in class because I was really interested in the topic. And then at the end of the year my professor actually asked me to go do research with her with her collaborators in Germany and so that's how I was able to do research abroad this past summer. So I built a really great relationship with her just through being an active participant in class. Like I definitely wasn't the best student in the class. But um, it was just, I showed how passionate I was. And so she really reached out to me, and it was a really great experience. Penny's being humble. I'm sure she was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Penny was a yeah. good student. <laughs> Any other stories you want to tell, yeah. guys? Uh, I mean, like one, one professor I have right now for Maps 445, uh, Professor Lototsky, um, one really interesting thing about him that I really love is that he teaches the class based on, like, you loving math, right? So like the, the topic's obviously very difficult and basically the whole class is struggling constantly. But like his his grading scale, not not so much his grading scale, but like his approach to the class is that you should really love what you're learning and you should really see the application in it. So he he always works really hard to get us to understand why we're learning this material as opposed to some professors I've had in the past and teachers in high school where it's more like, oh, you need to know this material for this test or as a prerequisite for something else. He's teaching us like math is beautiful and math has applications. So his passion really transfers over to the class as well. Math is beautiful. Yes. Um, Agreed. Very, it's very nerdy, I know. But <laughs> But well, we do go to a good engineering school. All right. Yeah. Next question um, coming in from Annie and Alexander. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna transition here. Let's say you are struggling in class and you go to the professor's office hours, but it's still not really clicking. What other uh, resources are out there in Viterbi to make students successful in their freshman year? What do you guys think? What do you guys got for me? I can talk about that one. Um, so my freshman year, I took um, Calc three. So it's the multivariable calculus, calculus, which can be kind of difficult. And I actually took honors multivariable calculus, so it was really difficult. And so I utilize uh, the Viterbi Academic Resource Center called BARC. And <laughs> um, it was really difficult. Just um, The class was really difficult, but it was so nice to be able to have BARC and <laughs> to be able to go there and get free tutoring. So BARC pretty much is tutors taught tutors which are upperclassmen. So I went and actually got to meet one of my really good friends. She was one of my tutors. Her name's Makana. She's really cool. Shout out to Makana if you're watching. Um, but pretty much what I did is I got free one-on-one -on -one tutoring before my midterms and before my exams and sometimes if I had homework help. And so that really helped me get through the course and um, be able to do well in the course. But in addition to that, um, a lot of the larger classes like chemistry and math, um, like the more general math courses, have um, supplemental instruction sessions, which are also taught by other students that went through the course and did well in the course. And they have worksheets weekly that you can do with them and a large exam review. So I utilize all of those when I was in the more general courses, for sure, because they're free. Yeah, I would say another. Oh, go ahead, girl. OK, I'll go <laughs> quick. Um, one thing I was just going to say is one of the best advice I would give is to befriend upperclassmen. And you can definitely do that through the more um, like professional clubs. So in my civil club, I met a ton of upperclassmen. and you know, they've taken the classes before and you, you know, become friends with them, so they're um, really willing to help you um, with homework or, you know, quizzes, any of that kind of stuff. So upperclassmen are a great resource to take advantage of, too. I was just going to say real quick, um, like Betty mentioned, supplemental instruction. A lot of the engineering classes actually have their own sort of specific programs like that. So I mentioned in my intro that I'm a teaching assistant for CS103, Introduction to Programming. So um, a lot of the earlier level CS classes have programs like that, where they have staffs of like 20 to 30 students who took the class before, who hold office hours and run lab sections just to help you out. And um, I know some other programs besides CS do that as well. Yeah, just adding on to something Kelly mentioned as well as befriending upperclassmen. Um, there's also student organizations on campus that host study nights. So I know for SHIP, the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, I'm actually the Director of Academic Development this year. So every Thursday we have study nights. We bring coffee, snacks, 
we have a VARC tutor, and we all get together as a group and study, so we work with upperclassmen who can also answer our questions. So it's a really huge community on campus that's willing to always help each other. Well, guys, thank you very much. Um, we're about halfway through now. Thanks, for everyone, for still sticking with us. We've got a great viewership out there. Uh, to break it up, I've got one funny question coming in from a, from a Kevin. Um, Kevin wants to know, do we skip class when it rains? Um, Kevin, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, I, I'll answer that myself. We do not skip class when it rains. I go, at least, and I, and I hope the rest of my panel goes. Uh, we just wear a rain slicker and, uh, and an umbrella. All right, next question for real. Um, <laughs> This question comes in from Christian, Samuel, Nicholas, and Benjamin. Guys, thanks all for joining us tonight. Uh, the question is, is it difficult to participate in research as a freshman? So what research opportunities exist for freshmen at USC? Um, I can jump on that. I um, did research my freshman year. So pretty much what I did um, my second semester freshman year, I was really interested in this professor who did research in autonomous systems but in micro-robotics. And so I was kind of also really interested in um, learning more about computer science. So he combined mechanical engineering and computer science with his research. Research. So what I did, I just, just uh, sorry, I just emailed him. I was like, hey, I'm really interested in what you're doing. Is there any room in your lab? And so um, he emailed me back right away. He's like, come in and talk to me. And so I just sat. He kind of interviewed me in a way, but like I'm a freshman, so he can't really interview me too much. He just wanted to know what I was interested in so he can put me on a certain team. And so he... Um, Put me on a team. I did the flying machine. So what I did is I worked with quadcopters working on um, Arduinos, which is a new kind of control toy, a platform way of working with controls. And so um, he got me started on that under a PhD student. And then starting my sophomore year, he gave me my own project. So my freshman year, I didn't get paid. And then my sophomore year, I started getting paid when I kind of proved to, my, proved to him that, like, you know, I'm a cool researcher and I can actually handle what um, he's giving me. So... It was really great. It was a really great experience, and I think it's really easy to be able to get research. You know, you just email a professor if you're interested. Some have spots, some don't. Some are more competitive than others. Um, the one I joined was brand new, so he definitely had a plenty of spots to fill. So just look out for cool professors. Yeah, yeah my freshman year as well, um, I got to do research at the second semester starting in January in the Biomechanics Implant Retrieval Laboratory at the Orthopedic Institute, which is right down the road from USC on Figueroa. Uh, and I kind of was able to get that position. Uh, I met a friend who volunteers there at the Orthopedic Institute, and she put me in contact with our volunteer coordinator, um, who then put me in contact with the lab. So uh, it was a really great experience. The first day I showed up at the lab, they were working on sort of like different amputated cadaver parts for like developing um, like new implants and things like that. So it was a really neat, very hands-on experience um, and a really great opportunity. I think as a freshman, um, sometimes there's not a whole lot that you can – contribute to a lab because you haven't had a lot of those general classes that kind of give you the foundation. Um, but it definitely is a great experience to kind of go in and start to assist the graduate students and kind of start to see what happens and kind of develop that skill set. Uh, and then you can take that with you through the following year. So uh, it definitely, the first semester that I was at USC, I met with a lot of different professors kind of trying to understand more of what I liked to do and what I thought would be interesting. Uh, and after meeting with all those different professors, I kind of started to narrow down more on what kind of research I would want to do because it's definitely a really big field. And within any given major, there's a lot of different potential labs you could work in in different areas of research. So um, the opportunities are out there. You just have to seek them out and uh, kind of do some chosen style networking. So, yeah. <laughs> Madalena, thank you so much. I think that's a great answer because she's right. The opportunities are out there. You just have to seek them out. As a freshman, the simple answer is yes, you can do research. Um, but I want, I want to transition here. Uh, a lot of our, our viewers, I, I see Max, uh, Yulin, uh, Ejaz, you guys are talking about hackathons, 3D printing, and engineering organizations that have a hands-on component. So let's kind of open up to the group. I know Jordan and Eric, you guys can really hit this one off. But as freshmen, as maturity students, what sort of hands-on engineering and engineering organizations can you do slash join? Yes. Yeah. Oh. You want to start, Eric? Go ahead. Yeah, I'll start. Uh, so freshman year coming in, uh, I started research my first semester, and I joined the SC Racing team really early on. Um, so, I mean, both those things are very hands-on uh, activities, and SC Racing is one of three really large um, design teams that we have on campus. We have SC Racing, and we build a Formula race car every year. Uh, we have Rocket Lab that, I, Coco, you can talk about. And uh, we have Aero Design Team, which is like a team that builds a remote control airplane every year, and they go out and fly it. Um, so um, 
like in terms of accessibility to all these things, it's really easy to sign up in the beginning of every semester. All these groups try and recruit and get get as many students as they can. And hackathons are uh, starting out really soon. Uh, actually, HackSC is happening this Friday. Um, and there's a lot because of we're, because we're in LA. We also have access to like the local hackathons. And as you may know, uh, larger hackathons actually sponsor travel. So a lot of my friends, as well as myself, have traveled to participate in different hackathons. And it's been really fun to build cool projects. But it's personally, I want to build a project that has like more potential, which means it's higher quality. And a lot of that has to do with like research. So in terms of building a better product, I more spend my time in the research lab and on design teams rather than like on hackathon projects. So yeah. Cool. Yeah, you actually hit a lot. Um, so basically, just kind of reiterating on that, uh, Hack SC is going to be this up upcoming weekend, so starting on Friday. Yeah. Um, but I'm not necessarily involved too much in like the coding aspect. Um, computer science is basically magic to me. Um, <laughs> but uh, when it comes to like 3D printing and stuff like that, I'll actually be holding um, like over the course of those two days uh, a couple of workshops for people who are interested in actually uh, getting involved with 3D printing for whatever project they're actually working on. Um, so basically I'll be helping out in case anybody doesn't know how to use SolidWorks or a slicer or anything kind of more technical and actually getting their product or whatever the project is uh, up off the ground. Uh, I'll be there to kind of assist in that. And then 3D4E kind of helps uh, all around with anybody who has questions about 3D printing or anything like that and they want to get involved in specific projects. But we can talk about that more later, I guess, if the question is more towards hacking. Yeah, and I guess uh, one, one, one quick thing is like the infrastructure. So there, there are groups like 3D4E as well as the Viterbi School in general that provides a lot of resources for students. Like, for instance, if you want to 3D print, print something, we have 3D4E and like a fab lab for the undergrads. Um, on top of that, it's pretty easy to go into like Eric, Viterbi. Hey, yeah. hey, Eric, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut you off right there. I'm, I'm going to cut you off only because I know that Kelly has a great student org that I want her to talk about. Because <laughs> I think I really think yes, that it, yeah. it ties right into the point you're about to make about resources and and how Viterbi supports these student organizations. So Kelly, can you talk to Concrete Canoe for a hot second? Yeah. Um, so besides the design teams that Eric mentioned, there's also a bunch of other ones. Um, one that I'm personally involved with, I kind of mentioned in my intro, is Concrete Canoe. Um, it's part of ASCE. And we literally design and pour a canoe out of concrete. Um, this year, they actually kind of changed the rules on us. So we're, you know, we'll scramble a little bit, but we're going to figure it out. Um, but it's really cool because we're um, the ones, you know, literally pouring concrete. And we're, like, you know, pushing it up on our mold to get the uh, shape of the canoe right. Um, and there's a bunch of different uh, sub teams you can get involved with. So there's the structures team, which you know designs the structure of the canoe. There's the aesthetics team, which I'm a part of, where you come up with like the graphics on the canoe. Uh, there's the mixed design, so they come up with the uh, mix of the concrete we're going to use. Um, there's the construction team, who literally builds the con or the canoe. And then my personal favorite team is the paddling um, sub team. So I'm on that one too, where we actually get to race the canoe at our competition, which is a ton of fun. So yeah, um, in terms of hands-on things for civil, there's definitely a ton. But each of the majors really has its own design team where you can get super involved and learn a lot um, and kind of see the stuff you learn in the classroom get applied to like a real-life project. So it's pretty exciting. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you so much. Really fast on my end, another great student group that I joined freshman year was uh, USC's Rock Repulsion Lab. Uh, and basically right off the bat in Rock Lab, I was learning how to work with composites, uh, carbon fiber, do carbon fiber motor cases, I was helping cast propellant, um, and I was also working uh, basically to understand the aerodynamics that go into building a, a space shot rocket. So, simply put, between concrete canoes, rocket ships, 3D printing, hackathons, aero design team, uh, there is a lot of things you can get your hands dirty with freshman year. Um, so, moving, shifting gears a little bit, thanks Jordan, Eric, and Kelly for great, great, great answers. Um, we've got a, a great question from Story. A uh, Story wants to know. I'm worried about being a female and a STEM major. I don't want to be doing this alone. Um, what's the average male to female ratio in your classes? <laughs> Story, we won't be doing it alone. Uh, I, 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 I take it away. I'm not the best to answer this question, I guess. Um, yeah, I can jump in real quick. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm building science, and we only have uh, eight kids in our major, and six of the eight are female. So in my major, we're the majority. So that's you know pretty awesome. Um, I am not as lucky as Kelly. I'm in aerospace, and we have about uh, 17 people. I am one of two girls, which um, didn't really bother me because I grew up with three older brothers, so it's like 
you know, I'm used to boys. But um, <laughs> in industry, I kind of started realizing in industry it's a little bit worse. You know, there's really not that many girls you'll be working with, and it may be a little bit different than, you know, having three older brothers, you know, working and having colleagues that are all boys. So I joined the Society of Women Engineers, which has been a really great opportunity because you get to hear and speak with women in industry that have gone through what you've gone through and are working in these male-dominated fields and giving you tips. So even if your classes don't have that many girls, you can still connect with other female engineers through so many other ways. And to me, honestly, even though I have only, you know, one other girl in my major, I'm still, you know, having so many friends, and I don't feel ostracized. I totally feel comfortable in my classes, and I have female professors, which are great. So you'll have friends. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in a major that um, gets a lot of attention sometimes for, you know, having kind of a, an imbalance of male to female. But I'll just say, like, from, in my day-to-day -day life, going to class, it's not something that I ever really noticed. I have like my set group of friends that I usually work on a lot of like group projects with, and it's exactly like three girls, three guys. So uh, it's not something I ever really noticed day to day. Fantastic, thanks, guys. That's that's great. Um, kind of switching switching gears again, uh, but this is a, a really serious, good, good question. I'm coming from Karthik, Benjamin, and Sefu. Um, these guys want to know how does Viterbi prepare us as as undergraduate students? for getting a good career, going to graduate school. Um, so where have you guys worked uh, at internships this summer, and what has Viterbi done to ensure that you guys got those jobs? I'll start. If, yeah, I mean, um, I guess I'll start two summers ago uh, when I got my first real internship. I was, uh, I was actually working with a startup company, and I, I wanted to, given the entrepreneurial nature um, of my studying interests and being in Los Angeles as well, um, I actually applied through a different startup that a friend of mine was working on, uh, and that startup's called Talent Trail, and basically uh, it hooked me up with a local startup called MyLab, um, which I was able to get an internship with um, and basically uh, get a little bit more skills on marketing, uh, competitive research, uh, and stuff like that. But uh, last summer, uh, I actually worked at PwC, and as I mentioned in my intro, um, I'll be returning with them, and I did uh, advisory consulting work for them uh, in the healthcare practice. So I'll still be working um, with my background in biomedical engineering, um, but basically uh, the best thing that the Turby does to kind of get you ready uh, is they offer a lot of different things for you to uh, practice your resume skill or, or your interview skills, they'll go over resume workshops. Um, but I think that one of the most important things for me was actually just knowing people who worked at different companies and being able to actually talk to them see what the process was like for them, not only for uh, just the recruiting process, but also for if they liked it, like what types of stuff that they were doing while they were working there. Um, and that really helped me narrow down where I wanted to actually apply to work um, and also helped me get the insider information on how do I apply and what's the best thing that's going to you know, work for me to be a great applicant. Yeah, I'd say another thing that's great about USC and Viterbi in particular is they really get you focused on your career pretty early on, especially freshman year. So in Freshman Academy, which is the class that I'm um, a coach for, we uh, did a resume uh, workshop basically for our students like the sixth week of class, and all of them were like, oh, I don't have a resume, like, and we're kind of freaking out, but, you know, it's totally okay, and we had, you know, someone from the uh, Viterbi Career Center come in and you know, cover what should be on the resume, uh, what kind of uh, the layout of it, the formatting and all that. So then after, you know, the workshop, all of our kids felt, you know, really comfortable and even a lot of them went to the career fair, which was great. And then I think another thing that's cool is there's a bunch of different programs um, that the Career, uh, Viterbi Career Center puts on. So there's one called BSAMP, which is where you get paired up with, uh, it's a Viterbi Student Alumni Mentoring Program which we get paired up with a alum. So I was with um, this guy, Chris, who works as a structural um, engineer and he was super cool and he you know answered all my questions gave me career advice and we just kind of you know did like a phone call once a month which was really cool actually Kelly thanks for um, thanks for saying something because I want to get I want to get Eric involved really fast um, so Eric talk maybe about I know you interned at Facebook after your freshman year which is awesome tell us more about that maybe what resources helped you get there yeah so uh, so yeah I interned at Facebook this last summer as a robotics intern I'll be going back uh, we're currently trying to spend some time in Paris over the summer. Not too sure yet, but coming into the internship as a freshman, it was kind of hard because my my view on getting an internship after freshman year is like I don't really have that many skills that I could be like applying to these like jobs that internships I can be getting. And for Facebook, uh, like Kelly mentioned before, really early on, 
my freshman academy coaches uh, did a resume review, right? So brought my resume in, the same resume I had in high school, nothing really updated, and after like a few iterations, it got pretty decent, and I applied to Facebook as well as other companies um, through their online portal and studied really hard for their, uh, for their interviews and really focused on like what I had been doing outside of class as well as like the like the engineering classes I've been taking, like Intro to Mechanical Engineering and C++. Um, after a few interviews, everything obviously went pretty well, and I ended up going to Facebook. And one thing that really helped, I think, was meeting the recruiters at the career fair. So every semester we have a huge Viterbi career fair. Ours happened about a month ago, and I was there at the Facebook booth, uh, Facebook booth for a little bit, talking to the recruiters, and they're here all, like, multiple times a semester to talk to students and potential uh, potential interns and full-time employees. And as an intern, I really think that these recruiters are great because even once you get to the company, they stick with you the whole way. And w even when I'm going back, it's the same recruiter and they really get and they really get to know you. So going to the career fair and Viterbi and USC both putting on huge career fairs gives students a great opportunity to talk to these companies and potentially, very likely, get internships at very desirable companies like Facebook or Google. So, Yeah, the, just one quick fact. The, the Viterbi Career Fair was so big this year, they had to yeah. move it to a different location because that many companies came. And I think the Viterbi Career Fair itself was bigger than the USC like general career fair because that many companies want to come to USC and recruit like our engineering students. So yeah. it's really easy to you know meet people, talk to recruiters, and get an internship. Kelly, didn't you do a podcast at the career fair? Yeah, uh, yeah. there's a podcast about the career fair that you can check out um, on the Viterbi Voices website. Um, at the top, there is a podcast tab. Um, I'm one of the co-hosts of the podcast, and we have a ton of great episodes. Um, there's one about Rocket Lab, one about 3D printing featuring Mr. Jordan, um, one about the career fair. There's one about entrepreneurship with Calvin, all kinds of great stuff. So you should definitely check out the podcast. Jordan, isn't there a video about the career fair? <laughs> there is a video about the career fair, too. Uh, we're having too much fun at yeah. this point. <laughs> Your transitions are slick, Betty and Jordan, yeah. but you're not fooling me. Um, oh. so, so it's now at 7.48, so thank you to everyone who's hung out with us for the last 48 minutes. We really appreciate it. We hope you're getting a lot of it. Keep pouring in questions. I'm peeking over at them every so often here. Um, but we've got a few questions over the last hour here where um, – People are asking a lot of these admission-based questions, as in, uh, the earliest date an applicant will discover they've been accepted, um, is my GPA high enough to be admitted to a Viterbi? These are all fantastic questions, but we have students really don't have the best answer, so I'm going to recommend you to check out the Viterbi admissions live chat, where, where staff members from the Viterbi admissions crew can answer those questions better for you. That live chat is on, I just forgot the date, give me a second, that live chat is... Tuesday, November 17th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can find it at viterbiadmission.usc.edu slash live, which is also, you just click a button right below the screen here. Uh, there should be a button that will take you right to that page. So check out the Viterbi Admission live chat on November 17th. All right, back to our questions. Now, between a minute of each other, Lexington and Noam asked basically the same exact question. No, Lexington wants to study abroad. He both want to study abroad. Is it common for engineers to study abroad? And if they do, will they still graduate within four years? Guys, take it away. I'll talk yes. about studying abroad. <laughs> I love I love this question because this past summer I had the greatest experience of like my Viterbi USC everything career um, through the Viterbi Overseas Program. So what it is is a program held by Viterbi. So it's a program just for Viterbi students. Viterbi professors are involved with it. And what we did last year is we went to London. So pretty much it was like 30 of us, and we went to London with Viterbi professors and took engineering classes abroad. I took a technical elective in industrial and systems engineering, and I took my technical writing course. So I got that out of the way. They both went towards my major, and so now I'm actually ahead in units which is really great. I know a lot, the big stereotype is like, oh, you're going to get behind if you study abroad. You know, you can't do it if you're an engineer, but you definitely can at Viterbi because they have this great program. It's actually one of the reasons I chose to come to USC because I knew, like, when I went into engineering and when I went to college, I wanted to study abroad. And so 
through that program, I was able to, you know, meet some of my best friends and, like, have so many great experiences. I studied abroad in London, but I was also able to travel to Budapest, to Scotland, to Paris, and to Ireland, and it was so great and incredible. And then I got to continue my European adventure and do research in Germany afterwards, which was great. So I highly recommend if anyone goes to college, they need to go abroad. It's life-changing, you know, stereotypical, found myself, loved it all. Do it. <laughs> Uh, I also was able, or sorry. Go ahead, no, go ahead. You got it. <laughs> uh, last summer, I was also able to study abroad um, through a slightly different program. So uh, I have a minor in Spanish language, which is completely non-engineering related, um, but it's which also goes to say that you can do more than just engineering uh, when you're at fraternity as well. We're going to get that. Uh, that question is next, Madalena, but good plug. I loved it. All right, keep going. <laughs> So, anyways, uh, it was really fun. I got to spend a summer in Madrid for about eight weeks, uh, which was a really amazing program. Got to travel all around Europe at the same time. Uh, so, incredible experience. And next semester, uh, I will more than likely be studying in Singapore for the Viterbi International Exchange Program as well. So, uh, within Viterbi, there's plenty of experiences to go abroad if you want to go to more towards engineering-based experiences. Um, but apart from that as well, there's also countless kind of study abroad opportunities within USC as a whole that you can really take advantage of. So um, I definitely will echo Betty on that. It is very worth going abroad and uh, very exciting to kind of see what you can do with engineering around the world. So. <laughs> cool. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take over from there. But uh, my first actual experience abroad was through Viterbi. Uh, and it was through a program called Ipodia. And basically Ipodia is uh, described as a classroom without borders. And you spend the majority of the semester actually at USC. Uh, but you're learning with students from around the world from five or six different universities. So uh, they could be from China, South Korea, Taiwan, Qatar, uh, you name it, pretty much anywhere. Um, but you learn with those people for about you know a semester. And then at the end of the semester, you have the option to uh, pursue going abroad. And so um, my first time I went abroad with Hypodia, we ended up going to Israel. And we spent two weeks there, which is great. Um, and then I actually uh, actually TA'd for the course for two extra semesters, and the next two semesters we went to Dubai and Beijing. Um, so I've been able to see a lot of the world through Viterbi, um, and it's been a really great experience to kind of go on these uh, glorified field trips, uh, so to speak, um, and kind of experience the world um, outside of the normal semester, uh, but not for too long. I want to stay near Los Angeles. So. <laughs> And yeah, Eric, and I think, is in that program as well right now, right? Yeah, yeah, Coco and I are in the same class right now. So. Yeah, I was going to say real quick, too, um, Allie, she's a homie, but she actually is abroad right now um, in Australia, and she's been there all semester long um, studying at University of Melbourne, I believe. Yeah. But, yeah, she just, like, casually posts <laughs> selfies with, like, koalas on the regular, <laughs> and I get really jealous. And she's definitely, you know, not... Like not gonna graduate late or anything, or have to take summer classes. All her classes are gonna, you know, count towards her major, and she'll graduate on time and spend a semester in Australia. So it's definitely possible to go for, you know, a few weeks, a semester, however long you want to go. Yeah, I think it's Australia, isn't it? Australia. Yeah, Ali, Australia. however she does it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely don't say Melbourne like like how you said. Um, Melbourne. So uh, we've got a time for two more quick questions, but. I've got a great question here from Michael, from Nicholas, from Nathan. You guys all ask kind of the same sort of question, um, but it's super important. Is it possible to double major at the Turvey, first off, and, and then within Dorn's Life or Marshall, the Business or Natural Sciences School or any other school at USC? And let's kind of expand that question. Not only can you double major, but is it possible to take fun classes outside of engineering? That's something that we like to do as engineers is take classes that maybe don't pertain to what we're going to do for the rest of our lives. So take it away. What, do you, what classes have you guys taken? All right, I'll start this one off because I'm the only double major here, so uh, <laughs> this is my moment. But yeah, no, it's um, it's definitely possible. Like I said in the beginning, I'm a double major in computer science and physics, which is in Dornsife. So um, I just like re work really well with my advisors to make sure that like some of my classes can overlap, and sometimes they double count for different like credits. Like for example, uh, Math 4445, which Eric is in, which I'm taking for my physics major, actually counts as a tech elective for CS as well. So it's definitely possible. You just need to like work with your advisors and make sure that your schedule all plans out. And um, for a while, I thought it was going to take me some extra, time, but I actually just found out I'm going to graduate in four years. So pretty cool. Woo! Congratulations. <laughs> nice. Um, in terms of the four um, or five classes, oh, 
I'll just go real quick. I'm actually in a, this is just like a super random class I'm in, but it's um, sailing class. So I'm actually going on my voyage in like five days, and I'm really pumped up. But you spend, you know, the semester learning about the different parts of the ship, how the boat through, moves through the water, how you tie all the ropes and all that. And then the big, you know, exciting part is you do an overnight voyage to Catalina, and I'm going on Friday. So it's just a fun class I was able to squeeze in. There's a whole uh, bunch of other ones you can do too. I just signed up for that for next semester. So it's so fun. Next semester. <laughs> Everyone should take um, it. <laughs> yeah, adding to the fun classes, I um, took a really interesting one. I am like so like physically awkward, so I decided to take a hip hop class my freshman year, which was really cool because like the professor was a backup dancer for Beyonce, who I am low key very obs- actually not even low key. Like if you it's meet me, I keep <laughs> high key obsessed with Beyonce. So this class was like so incredible. I learned nothing about dancing, but it was so much fun to like get a three hour workout in once a week and like learn hip hop to the best of my ability. But it was just fun. It was a break from engineering. I was with some people that were actual dancers, which like was so cool to watch them. I was with people that weren't in engineering. I was with like business people. So it was great to like have all these people come together and like look super awkward together or not. Some people were really good, but I definitely was so bad, but it was still so much fun. Yeah, and adding on to that really quick, uh, just one of the cooler classes that I got to take uh, outside of engineering, or I guess outside of engineering, um, it's an ITP class. Um, but I took uh, Intro to Photoshop and Illustrator. So um, I've always been really interested in kind of design and product design and stuff like that. So uh, really getting to learn how to use that kind of software for graphic design uh, has been really interesting. And I'm I very comfortably calling myself proficient at it um, just from that class alone. So um, that was really something that I was interested in doing and excited and glad that I got to do. Fantastic. Well, thank you guys for answering that question. So before we get to our last question, um, I want to let you guys all know about the Truby Expo right here. Uh, the Truby Expo is November 22nd, 2015, and it's coming up shortly. Ishan, you asked a great question. Ishan, you asked here, is it worth visiting the co- campuses for college you're, colleges you're applying for? Ishan, the simple answer is yes, and Discover USC, the Truby Expo, uh, is a great opportunity for you to see what's going on at the Truby through lab views, student panels, uh, meeting with alumni, uh, just a lot of great opportunities to get a better grasp of what your life will be like here at USC. So I definitely recommend to anyone interested in attending USC, if you're in the area, attend the Turby Expo, November 22nd. You can find out more information um, at www.viterbyadmission.usc.edu slash expo. And there's a button to find that website immediately, immediately below the screen here. So with that, we're going to move to our last question of the night. Uh, thank you all for hanging out with us for the last hour. We really appreciate it. We hope you learned something. Um, and definitely check out the trivivoices.usc.edu to get more uh, answers to your questions and the great videos that Ke- Betty's creating and the good podcasts that Kelly is also working out for us. But our last question. So a lot of you guys have asked, what makes the Turby unique? What traditions does USC have that, that you guys love? Um, somebody even asked, what made you choose the hashtag Viterbi Life. Oh. Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> Let us first say that the we didn't choose the hashtag Viterbi Life. The hashtag Viterbi Life chose us. Uh, but on a more serious note, why did we all choose to attend USC? So, so Betty, kick us off. Why, why USC? Of course. So I chose USC kind of like I said earlier because of study abroad, but more general because when I started talking to students, I um, really started looking at like what engineering school can I, you know, not only do engineering but also do more and get involved and get involved in leadership and volunteer and potentially study abroad. And at USC, I never met a single engineering student that was just doing school, and I knew someone. Um, um, I knew that's something I wanted to do, so I was so glad at USC I was able to not only do engineering but also to get involved in all these organizations like Cool and like Freshman Academy, and go abroad and do research and have all these great opportunities. So um, by far, that's been my favorite thing about USC and why I think anyone else interested in you know doing engineering plus um, should come here. Yeah, for me, the reason I chose USC is because I knew I wanted to do engineering and I knew I wanted to go to a strong academic school. And so, but when looking at that, I also knew that I didn't only want to do engineering. I wanted to do other things. I wanted to have fun. I wanted to go out. 
and especially one of the things that I really wanted to do was take advantage of a full college life. So when I saw uh, USC that was located in LA, so I knew I'd be able to go out and do a lot of fun stuff, and also the football team, I'd be able to enjoy tailgating, going to football games. I knew that my life wouldn't only be engineering, that it'd be engineering plus. And that's the reason that I chose USC, because it was going to give me the well-rounded experience that I was looking for within engineering. Yeah, my answer actually is very similar to Daisy's. Um, I grew up in the area, so USC was always on my radar. Like I said, I was a big football fan, so I really wanted to come and experience those games as a student. But when it came down to what really made me decide to come here is just that there was so much flexibility in what I could study. Because I wasn't really sure when I first started what I was going to do. I thought maybe I wanted to do film or maybe I wanted to do video game programming. So I really wanted to come somewhere where I could study computer science and physics and have the freedom to do that. And also just have the freedom to like join the ice hockey team even though I've never played before. Yeah, uh, so the reason I chose USC uh, at a very high level is that it fit well with my personality. So coming to visit, uh, back to the question about visiting campuses, like definitely visit the colleges before you decide to come. And after I came to visit USC multiple times, uh, talking to the students, talking to the professors, and hearing about the opportunities that are available here, it was very clear to me that tying into like the collaborative effort of like the group as well, because I'm a very collaborative person, and I really believe that collaboration is the only way to get more impact through like engineering and all other endeavors, and USC is very big on that, and Viterbi is very big on that, so the fit between the school and myself was like very clear, and it was very easy for me to make the decision to come here. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, for me, I think the, the biggest reason that I came was because of the balance between um, really the academics, the social, and the extracurricular kind of areas of my life, and um, I've always been someone who likes to be extremely well balanced, like Daisy said. Um, um, but being able to kind of get involved in those different um, atmospheres, um, but each one um, being so strong as it is, uh, really helped solidify my choice to come down here. Um, I was also considering a couple other schools in Northern California, um, but I wanted to get a little bit further south and kind of see what SoCal was like, uh, and that was definitely cool, although I was a little afraid of it at first, uh, coming from a town of 8,000 people moving to Los Angeles. Um, but I'm definitely glad that I made the choice. Uh, it's been a great experience so far, and I got another semester to go, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, so for me personally, ever since I was little, I knew I wanted to try to go somewhere out of state, even though Colorado is the best. I figured it would be good to, you know, try somewhere else out um, and, you know, explore more of the U.S. And I think going to a school out of state, you know, made me grow up and become more independent, which is something I think is important. Um, and then USC in particular, as everyone mentioned, it's the good balance of, you know, a good engineering school and doing more than engineering, but it's also just such a friendly environment on campus. Like, everyone just seems genuinely, like, excited to be here, and even though it's such a big school, it really feels little. Like, you walk around, you run into, like, five people you know, and I'm biking around, and you kind of find your place um, here with the different clubs, the different activities, um, and fun fact, USC was the only school I applied to that had a hockey team, so I wanted to make sure I got to keep playing hockey, and I get to do that here, too. Yeah, um, I definitely want to just echo everything that everyone else has said. Um, USC has offered so much in that way. Uh, I think one of the reasons that I really chose USC uh, is because I love the Trojan family, and I love kind of the commitment to learning how to think and then going and taking that and making an impact with it. So uh, where USC is located in Los Angeles means that we have the opportunity to interact a lot with the local schools and the local community. Um, and I really loved that uh, being an engineer at USC and Viterbi kind of meant that we got to take what we were learning in the classroom and bring it right outside the door. So whether that meant getting involved in like entrepreneurial endeavors where we got to kind of work with local businesses or whether that meant tutoring or things like that, uh, it was just an amazing, and it has been an amazing experience. Um, to get to participate in that way. So that was something that really drew me to USC. And uh, it hasn't been said yet, but and you guys will probably hear it a ton uh, about USC, that the Trojan family is very real. And uh, I really enjoyed just kind of, kind of participating in like, the spirit and the excitement of the big Trojan family, uh, everyone from engineers to all the other majors at USC and everything that everyone studies. So it's a great diversity of people here. And I uh, just really love getting to participate in that community. Thanks. Well, thank you, everyone, for uh, giving your input there on why USC. Uh, to kind of bring this conversation full circle, one of our first questions was about um, why do we pick our majors? And I picked my major uh, because I wanted to go to space. I wanted to be an astronaut. I'm an astronautical engineering major. 
And I chose USC because USC gave the best ability to possibly realize that dream. Uh, and that was mainly through their, their career connections in Southern California. So I went to USC because when I toured Rocket Lab uh, as a high school senior, I met people who were working at SpaceX, working at Northrop Grumman, working at Virgin Galactic, working at Boeing. And I thought to myself as a high school senior, wow, I want to be like these people. I want to excel like these students and hopefully have the opportunity to work at these amazing companies in Southern California and, and realize my dreams um, that I have, that I've always had. So that is why I chose USC, really to put myself in the best position coming out of, of college. So that is it for us. Thank you so, 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 so much for joining us for the last hour. We're happy you're here. We love to answer your questions. Check out the website, thechirbyvoices.usc.edu, a little bit more, peruse it. And uh, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Have a good night. Fight on. Fight on. Fight on. Fight on.